Welcome back to Cybers TV, everybody. You're watching our mid-morning report. We're going to continue our discussions on regulation. Specifically, we're going to look at the area of the fact that we've got global regulations, but how are regions interpreting it and get some regional perspective. Brian Starwalt is next to me. He's the MD Supervision at the Dubai Financial Services Authority. Colin Lobo is the Regional Head of Crime, sorry, Financial Crime Risk <laughs> uh, at Standard Chartered Bank. <laughs> <laughs> Not crime. And Gordon Archer is the head of financial institutions for Africa at City. John Garrett is a general manager and group chief compliance officer at the National Bank of Abu Dhabi. So thanks very much for coming. Had a good session? We had a great session, I think. Who was moderating that session? Not, not any of you guys? No, no. Uh, Brian Calvin. Okay, so tell me what were some of the main things that came out of that session for you, the highlights? Well, I guess uh, the, the highlights is the, uh, the differences between global mm -hmm. regulation um, uh, and local mm -hmm. regulation, and really how do we match the two. Mm -hmm. And how are you doing that at it's the Dubai Financial Services well, Authority? Well, it's, it's not easy <laughs> um, uh, in, in many ways. In some ways, you can look at the, um, uh, at the pronouncements of the FATF mm -hmm. um, in terms of how we should look globally mm -hmm. at financial crime and tax evasion and corruption, uh, et cetera. Uh, but then you have issues uh, kind of in the extraterritoriality mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. um, where and we had a lot of discussion of FATCA. Mm -hmm. um, so I can interpret how I should react to FATF, but I can't interpret how I should react to FATCA because mm -hmm. it's not my rule mm -hmm. um, uh, and it's not up to me to mm -hmm. interpret, but it should be part of the risk management function of mm -hmm. every institution. Mm -hmm. And it is a risk to the institutions that are in my jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think one of the things that I took away was um, the difficulties that, you know, th I thought I was the only one facing them, but clearly, you <laughs> know, every organization in, in this space and in, in my uh, kind of function um, have these difficulties to deal mm -hmm. with. Uh, and I think just picking up on what Brian was just saying is um, the different jurisdictional uh, aspects of this um, make it very difficult to implement um, mm -hmm. in the front line, uh, could be costly. But Tell me about some of the specific issues that you're dealing with at the front line that some of these people upstream haven't thought about because they're not doing your day job. Well, some of the things you know that we have to contend with are some of the you know the, the basics uh, of know your customer or customer due diligence. Actually, getting the awareness levels up, not only within our organisation but also within you know amongst our clients. Uh, because sometimes they have difficulty understanding as to why we're asking for certain information, et cetera. So, um, you know, what we're doing is, you know, we educate um, our, our clients. We, we don't just ask for information. We explain why we need that information. So, and hopefully that would actually, you know, move to a, making it a, a better place for AML and mm -hmm. terrorist financing uh, mm -hmm. compliance. Mm -hmm. I think um, I, I follow the same the same line of thought. For 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 me, one of the big things actually came through was the fact that how do we put the the Americans, FAT, FATCA, and the Europeans to sit down and actually come up with one regulation or a standard regulation that can be implemented? Because implementation costs for a lot of this dis disjointed uh, mm -hmm. uh, regulation is it's really high for most of the FIs that I see in mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. From my point of view, what I took was the amount of resources that are now being taken into compliance with these new regulations, especially the extraterritorial ones, and the numbers of staff that my colleagues from the major international banks are employing. Mm -hmm. And I, there is going to be a critical shortage of trained compliance officers to actually interpret mm -hmm. and assist our staff mm -hmm. stay within the regulations. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think costs can only rise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely agree with that, John. Uh, I think, you know, um, the pool of experienced resource is, you know, depleting rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, trying to find um, individuals with the requisite experience, not just on US regulations, but local requirements, but also understanding the cultural differences and, you know, is making it a challenge. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look during the discussions, we were saying what, may, what makes a good team? It's having a team comprised of police officers, uh, regulators, lawyers, compliance officers, experienced business people that know how things operate. Mm -hmm. Well, by the time we've done that, especially for smaller banks, you've got to have teams five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people mm -hmm. just to start the basics. Mm -hmm. Never mind going out and trying to see what's going on in the business. Mm -hmm. And that goes on at the at the regulators mm -hmm. level as well. I mean. 
the DFSA, we've got 130 uh, staff. We have 20 different nationalities. Mm -hmm. um, but my supervision team, I look at who has private sector experience, who has just regulatory experience. I want to see that someone has filled in a trade ticket mm -hmm. um, in, in some ways. I want to see somebody has actual frontline experience. And I'm also looking at diversity of language mm -hmm. um, because a lot of the documentation as a international hub uh, mm -hmm. may not be English. Mm -hmm. um, we may be looking at at trade finance documents in Chinese, trade mm -hmm. finance documents in Turkish, trade finance documents in a variety of languages, mm -hmm. um, and people have to, to get behind that. Yeah, I, mean, I think it goes, it just adds up to the cost, right? Mm -hmm. Because we are all sitting here, we're, we're looking for a thousand, two thousand, three thousand compliance officers, is driving us the cost for this person, and, that, that, and at the end of the day, guess what? That cost has to be passed on to, to, the, customer. to the customer. People like me it's at the bank. Yes. So, uh, is, is, is this something that you think what you're dealing with in cost, um, you know, in terms of cooperation that you can get with your uh, colleagues across the banking sector, and how do you think uh, someone like this guy can help you more effectively? I'm, I'm not sure, I mean, <laughs> I think from the initial, but my initial point was how can he, mm. with, with his collaborators around the globe, sit down and say, okay, this is what we want to do, mm. to make sure that by the time we start implementing, mm -hmm. I'm not waiting for him to come up with one regulation, for him to come up with another. So I think that's really where we need the help. Mm. Sit down, have a, uh, a view of what we're trying to do, and then put it in place, and mm. then let the banks actually implement at mm. one go. Obviously, over time, mm -hmm. there will be changes, modifications, amendments to these regulations, but I think that uh, standardization w w w w is really what we need in, mm -hmm. in, in the sector. Go ahead. I think, um, you know, absolutely agree with uh, Gordon there. Um, I think there's going to be more collaboration in this space. Uh, I think we're going to find organizations actually put competitiveness on a business front aside and actually move into saying, well, you know what guys, there's a bigger risk out there, which is regulatory and legal risk, right? Mm -hmm. Let's put that at the forefront and let's collaborate to see how we can actually mitigate that risk, manage that risk down, you know, and not think about, you know, am I going to steal your customer, et cetera. Put that and, you know, really, you know, because that's one of the, the main hurdles I would, I would say to actually getting this collaborative mm -hmm. approach. That's you know. a very zen view from a banker. Do you think that's actually going to happen? Well, I mean, one of the problems that arises is for the customer, your, mm -hmm. you yourself. Mm -hmm. If there's more collaboration, there's more people sharing your data. Mm -hmm. Are you happy with that? Mm -hmm. Are the regulators going to allow it? I mm -hmm. mean, the regulations in the UAE are quite, quite strict on divulging confidential information. Mm -hmm. So all of those things need to be taken into consideration. Mm -hmm. If we are going to collaborate more, that means more bits of information are getting shared. Mm -hmm. I, and personally, I'm less comfortable about that. Yeah, and I think a lot of customers will be less comfortable about that. What, what would a regulator think? Well, a lot, yeah, a lot of customers will be mm -hmm. uncomfortable about that, but I think that's just the, the area we're in mm -hmm. uh, right now. And we do need to make each other uh, aware of, of, of costs. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, there's intended and unintended consequences with every regulation, mm -hmm. every type of reform uh, around the world. And what we need to do is break through some of those unintended mm -hmm. consequences mm -hmm. um, and, and look at which ones actually come out positive mm -hmm. as an unintended consequence, and which mm -hmm. one comes out negative. And if it's an unintended consequence that's negative, I think we need to correct uh, the problem. So that's, mm -hmm. that's probably where um, we are uh, in, in that particular space. But in some ways, I mean, the uh, cost of credit going up, I think, was an intended consequence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, of reform, that, that uh, people stopped pricing risk appropriately, mm -hmm. and so that's a correction that had to happen. Then the other thing we discussed in the last session here on Cybers TV, when we were talking about regulation, is a lot of players exiting some countries because of the cost. It's just not going to deliver a return on investment. Do you think for players like you, Gordon, for example, you're going to be one of the main beneficiaries uh, of this as a, as a player within a particular space? You've got that strength, you've got that closeness to the customer, you probably know them better than, say, the big global players. Maybe, yes, you've got a lot of higher cost on one side, but you'll get more volume, you'll get more margin. I think by our share size, we, mm. get, that, we, we get that advantage, yeah? Mm. Uh, uh, in being in a number of countries, covering some other countries mm. that were not then from a non-presence point of view, mm. yes, we do get that advantage. But whether or not I can take advantage of that and actually bank or do, do business with people who would, with, with uh, FIs who don't comply to regulations is another story. 
I have basic standards that mm -hmm. my customers need to meet. Uh, again, I think from the discussions that we had, it was, it, you have to look at it from a risk reward point of view. Mm -hmm. Do I want to put my reputation, do I want to put my, my uh, incur operational losses because I'm taking on, on, on onboarding customers who do not comply with, mm -hmm. with regulations? I don't think I want to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Abu Dhabi? Uh, taking that point on board, you can't be isolated. Yeah. If you're accepting large standards, the banks you're banking with, and you're having to bank with other banks, will be imposing their standards on you anyway, and telling you you have to impose them on the next level down. Mm. And that drive, you can't stand against it, because mm -hmm. we all need dollar clearing, we all need euro clearing. Uh, you have to comply. If you mm -hmm. don't comply, you become a pure local player, so mm -hmm. you're not providing services to mm -hmm. other banks. Let me ask you this, a lot of people have said to me at this conference, and we just had a regulator from, from, from Basel saying the same thing, that maybe regulators are putting too much pressure on the banks to do 100% compliance right away. And this is why you've got people still trying to grapple with everything and we've had uh, unrealistic expectations. So people are sort of scurrying in all different directions. We haven't sort of taken bite-sized chunks and let's say let's deal with this and this and this and sort of build the system, if you like, more effectively. Have you found that as a bank? I think you're yeah, yeah, absolutely right. I think there's been an avalanche of regulations you know, coming out uh, across the globe. You know, not just the US, not just Europe, et cetera, but you know, we operate in the Middle East, uh, you know, the Far East, et cetera, and we're seeing exactly the same thing. And we have to respond. You know, it's not something that we can actually sit back and say, well, I'm not going to deal with Singapore, I'm not going to deal. We do have to respond in those markets, but how does that actually impact us globally is something as well that, you know, again, we need to take into mm. account. So, I don't think it's going to end. Uh, mm. I don't think that regulators, you know, uh, are even at that space, you know, where they will collaborate to that level where banks can say, no, I'm not going to do this until you all agree. Um, because each one is looking after their own um, uh, interests, mm. um, you know, be it, uh, country-wise or regionally, you know, so on and so forth. So I, I don't think that it's going to change. I think, I mean, from my vantage point, over the last, what, five, six, seven, eight, uh, ten years, I think, you've seen a drastic change in terms of what you need, the kind of due diligence that you need to, to do to be able to onboard a, a single customer, right? Mm -hmm. A few years ago, it was a, a, day, a, a day event to, mm -hmm. to bring an, a new customer on, on board. Today, it takes three, four, five, sometimes six months on board because of the due dil diligence that, in I that you is required from you to be able to, mm -hmm. to, to comply with. You know, so uh, again, I, I think, I mean, unfortunately you cannot get mm -hmm. all the regulation at in, mm -hmm. in, in, in one bit. It would be great if it came in small pieces, but mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what it is. I, I think you've got to recognize that a lot of the regulation that's coming in is driven by politicians looking for re-election, looking to score mm -hmm. points. Mm -hmm. And therefore it isn't always the best. And it doesn't always take into account the, the difficulty those regulations are going to cause around the world because those politicians perhaps are only playing to a home audience. Mm -hmm. One thing that we haven't brought up a lot is about, yeah, we talked about the cost and the amount that it is help, um, having an effect on, on the bottom line of the business, but uh, have you found that with all these requirements, and yes, it's taking longer, that it's actually uh, stopped you or l made you lose a lot of potential business from anyone? Because every, if everybody's in the same boat, everybody's in the same boat, right? Yeah. I'd I haven't lost a lot of business, I guess, <laughs> as a regulator, um, but in, in, in a direct sense, but in an indirect sense, I, I have, because uh, we have to look at, at, at from where, which countries would we take mm -hmm. um, uh, an institution into, mm -hmm. into our jurisdiction, and what would we allow them to do? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and given the effects, uh, I guess, of the global changes in regulation, and I'm very happy that John alluded to some of these issues are mm -hmm. political, mm -hmm. um, because regulators, um, in, in many ways have been uh, you forced, I guess, mm -hmm. in, 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 uh, um, in, in many ways to change the, the regulatory environment. And that stemmed from the financial crisis, which the G20 acted uh, on. And the G20 said to the, the, 
the financial sector standard setters fix this uh, and fix it quickly. Mm -hmm. um, some things I think in the fixes look like they mm -hmm. were fixed quickly. Mm -hmm. um, some things look like they were thought through and what we have to do is, is mm -hmm. balance those two. Uh, okay. and correct things that, that aren't working properly. Okay, unfortunately we've got to leave it there. We've run out of time, but uh, thanks so much for coming and sharing the insights from your session with us earlier today. Thanks very much, guys.